Welcome to the Pacific eLearning Initiatives Overview Series on Sakai. Getting started with Sakai. In the second lesson, we will be covering the following. My workspace tools, setting notifications, hiding and activating sites, setting up your profile, and setting up a new course. When you log into Sakai, you will first go to My Workspace. From this page, you can link to all of your classes, view announcements from all of your classes, create updates to your profile, and create new classes. The calendar collects all of the calendar events from all classes that you're enrolled in, either as an instructor or a participant, and allows you to quickly see any upcoming assignments or due dates. If you click the calendar link to the left, the calendar will expand in the center of your screen giving you more detail. Clicking again on the link will give you more details about that particular event. Click back to calendar to see the entire calendar. You can choose to see the calendar by week, by day, by month, or by year. Click back to home to see the front page. And under calendar in the center of the page, if you click options, you also have the ability to sort your event types by priority. Deadline and exams are high priority, web assignments as medium priority, and everything else is low. Feel free to change these by using the move up or move down button, and then click update, and your preferences will be saved. Resources is a place where you can see digital assets that are being used by your classes. Anything that's loaded here will be available to all of your Sakai sites. To upload content such as video, audio, or documents, click Add. You are then given a choice to upload files, create folders, add web links, add citation lists, as well as create HTML page or text documents. Although you can add files here, you can also add files from other pages in the site, and with the exception of a profile picture, they will all upload here automatically. To add a picture, click Add, Upload Files, choose a file from a directory, in this case a picture of myself and click open. On the display name you can choose to leave the default name or add your own text and click upload files now. If you select the file that you just uploaded you'll have the option to edit details. Here you can change the name of your picture or your file, add a description, change the copyright status, Determine whether or not only members of this site can see it, or if it's going to be publicly viewable, as well as other optional properties. In this case, we'll leave them all blank, but you can come back and add an alternate title, publisher, subject keywords, and so on. Once you're satisfied, click Update, and the information will be saved. Next, let's add two pictures to the profile. The profile is a page that contains your contact information. To customize your profile, click on Profile. Here you can see that I've already added some information. Click Edit My Profile, and here you can be as detailed as you'd like to be. The only requirement is a first and a last name. In this case, I have included my title, department, and location. To add a picture, I will click Choose a New File. I have a picture that I took earlier and saved on my computer. I'll select it and click Open. Select Upload New Picture. Don't forget this step. If you do, your picture will not load. Another method of adding a picture is to use the resource. To give you an example of that, the profile allows you to add additional information on your profile. In this case, I would like to add a graphic to my profile page that I've already uploaded into the resources earlier this lesson. In the text editor, I will now click the image icon Click the Browse Server button, and you'll notice that the image that I uploaded earlier in the Resource folder is now present. Before I click OK, a few notes. Alternative text is a good idea as this is the text that can be read by software that aids with visually impaired students. Sometimes, if you are using an image that is too big, you can also adjust the height and the width as well. and click Save. Here is my completed profile. Membership is a fast way to see all the active sites that you are enrolled in. 
If you have sites that you are no longer using, you can hide them by going up to Preferences, which then lists all of your active sites. To hide one class, click it and click the Remove Selected Arrow. If you want to select multiple sites, Shift-click to select an entire group of classes, and then click the single arrow, which then moves only those courses selected. To hide all sites, click the double arrow for Remove All, and now all of my sites are hidden. Or to bring them all back, double arrow back, which brings all of my sites back. Another useful feature in this section is the Notifications button. Here I can set up my site so that Sakai will email me under certain conditions. In this case, I have it set up to send me any announcement, changes in resources, changes in syllabus, and notifications regarding email sent to any of my sites. For each of these categories, I can choose that an email be sent at the time of the change, or a summary email once a day summarizing all of the low priority announcements, or I can specify that no email is sent. Please note, however, that you will still receive any high priority messages. To start a new course, go to Site Setup. In Academic Term, choose your campus. Click Continue. Enter the subject, the course and the section number. Enter a brief description. If you copy and paste text from a word processor, you may be asked to paste the text into a special dialog box. Go ahead and right click and say paste. Click OK and the text will appear. Click continue. Next you will be asked to select tools for your course. As you can see, Sakai gives you a lot of options. In later videos, we will look at many of these tools, but for now, let's not select any of them. We can always, at a later time, add any of them back that we want. You will also be given the option to reuse material from other sites that you own. Click Continue, select Publish Site, and Continue, and Request Site. You've now created a new site. And now we have created both a profile and a course site. In the next video, we will add elements such as a syllabus, a lesson, and assignments to our sample class.